Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you, and time for us to catch up with a running back prospect who will hear his name called, I believe, somewhere on day three of the NFL draft. It is the MAC Offensive Player of the Year for, I believe, two years running now, and a guy who rushed for over 1,000 yards in just seven games last season. It is UB running back Jared Patterson who caught up with Steve and myself. Hey, Jared, thanks very much for giving us some time. We appreciate it. We know it's uh, brizzy this time of year for guys that are in the draft pool. Um, I guess that is the first question I've got for you. How busy has it been, you know, with these Zoom meetings that you can have with teams and stuff like that, along with, you know, maybe last-second workouts and things of that nature? How busy has the run-up been here these last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of died down now. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's getting closer to the draft. But before that, was kind of busy. You know, some some days I have you know, like workouts, and I have up to four virtual meetings with teams a day. But it's kind of you know, it's kind of down down. I get a call here and there, you know, asking about is this gonna be a draft day number or where are you gonna be at uh, watching the draft and things like that. But you know, the the experience has been everything I expected you know, it, it was going to be. So I'm just thankful to be in this position. What has what have the teams been telling you about when you could expect to be drafted? What kind of level? I know you get different messages from different teams. What are you expecting if it went just like you expected to go? What's it going to look like on draft day? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I kind of heard, you know, everywhere. It's kind of been all over the place. And, you, you know, I really don't really pay attention to it. You know, I, my mindset is uh, – whatever opportunity, you know, uh, knocks at my door, I'm going to take full advantage of it. And, you know, I just heard, you know, third or fourth round, fifth round, sixth round. So it's kind of everywhere. So you just got to have an open mind and, you know, just, just be thankful for if you get that phone call on, on, on one of those draft days. Now, I know that, you know, you and there's, a you know, there's been a much publicized story about how you and your brother kind of decided you were going to be a package deal coming out of high school um, I know Kent State was the first to offer you guys, and then Buffalo jumped in soon thereafter, and you guys decided on on Buffalo. But I'm curious, like, what kind of salesmen were you guys in high school, like, in terms of selling yourselves as a package deal? That's a bold move. Uh, how, how were you guys as salesmen? I'm very curious how you were in the room. Yeah, we were we were crazy. You know, it was a really <laughs> sort of point. You know, <laughs> our high school coach, uh, you know, both our high school coaches at the time, we're asking, are, are you guys sure? You know, because we lost a lot of a lot of offers because we wanted to uh, go to school together. We we always knew that. You know, that was always the plan. You know, and you know, like 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 I always told coaches, and if you're not going off my brother, don't don't waste your time even talking to me. And James did the same thing because so, we already had had that set you know, that we wanted to go to the same university together. And so, how crazy will it be now? Because you know, James, as I understand it, has decided to go back for his senior season. You're obviously coming out a year early, how weird is it going to be being in a football environment without your, your twin brother? Uh, I don't think it's going to be too, too, too much, you know, uh, too much weird for me because uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm chasing my dream, you know, and, and when, when I was, you know, deciding on should I even uh, come out or not, he was the first person that kind of recommended me that you need to leave, you need to, you know, go, go to the next level and declare. So, cause we always talk, you know, every day on the phone and, and things like that and me doing this, I feel like I can open up a lot of doors for, you know, when it's, when it's his time. Before we start talking to you about the end of this draft, this season, give us a, a, a quick, a quick summary of your experience at university at Buffalo. Yeah, it's been uh, nothing but, you know, uh, great memories. You know, I got there uh, the January, I, I gray shirted, uh, you know, um, I just remember coming in, you know, seeing guys like Tyree Jackson, you know, Anthony Johnson, Khalil Hodge, you know, all the, J, J, uh, James O'Hagan, and just really glad to be a part of that that great program. You know, at the time they were up and coming, you know, Coach Coach Lance Lapo and his staff. You know, I came in as a freshman and, and grateful I played, you know, right away you know, on special teams. Then, uh, you know, I got, got in the backfield and they saw what I can do and kind of, you know, emerged, you know, uh, emerging in the backfield, but it's been nothing but great experiences at the University of Buffalo, and that's like basically my, my home from home. And how is it going to feel, Jared, to be the next name in the line of draft choices that have come out of 
you know, the University of Buffalo. I mean, Khalil Mack really put you guys on the map being a top 10 pick, but there have been a lot of other guys that have been drafted out of that school. How is it going to feel to be the next in that line, so to speak? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to feel uh, uh, great. It's going to be an honor, you know, uh, like you said, guys like Khalil Mack, you know, that I'm definitely, I definitely want to, you know, I'm chasing him and the guys that got drafted at, out of university. And it's just good uh, for our program that, that that people can go to the next level, you know, in the MAC conference, the group of five, and it just it looks good for recruiting and, and just things like that. And I'm just I'm just grateful to be in this position to show that the guys that's gonna come after me that it doesn't matter where where you go, you can you know achieve your dreams. What is your gut feeling about uh, maybe give us a top two or three or four, or however many you think uh, teams that we can look for to be thinking about you at whatever round they may pick you in. What maybe handful of teams are have you had the most contact with, or you have a best feeling about? Uh, it's hard to say. You know, I mean, I'm I'm in constant, uh, you know, communication with the 49ers, you know, the Patriots, uh, you know, Atlanta. It's just so many, you know, because it's just you know you hear stories about you know you talking to those those teams on a, a constant basis, but a team that you haven't even talked to, or just once can pick you up, you know. So you just got to have an open mind. You know, and just whatever team, you know, gives you that call, uh, you'd be ready, you know, uh, when you step on a facility from day one. And then, Jared, let's just review this past season quickly because there was a lot of doubt as to whether it was even going to happen. And you knew it was going to be an important year for you. How much were you wringing your hands over whether, A, there would even be a season – B, once there was a season, if it was going to be able to continue in some way, shape, or form, I mean, ultimately, it did get cut short. It was only six games. But maybe just walk me through your mindset, knowing this was a big year for you, and there was a lot of uncertainty before you hit the field, and now coming out on the other side of it, making as much of it as you possibly could, you know, putting up some career numbers in terms of yards per carry average and stuff like that. Yeah, it it was a frustrating time, not just for myself, but you know, the whole uh, team. Not the uncertainty. You know, we was one of the first conferences to cancel our season. And, you know, guys were just you know wondering what are we going to do. Are we going to play in the springtime and and things like that. And, you know, it, it just it just was that that was a, a amazing you know season. I mean, it wasn't quite how we wanted to finish, but just we got those six games and you know what I was able to do with the, with the short amount of games was uh was amazing. And I wish we had a full season just to see what, what the numbers would have looked like uh, with yeah. a full season. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it's crazy to uh, see, like, myself and a few guys on my team and other guys around the MAC conference, how we came together and kind of just pushed, you know, to, to bring it back. And, you know, we had meetings with the commissioner and, and things like that. And I thought it was pretty cool that, you know, we kind of uh, came together to, you know, push for action and, and, and football to come back. Where will you be and who will you be with on draft day? Yeah, so I, I head home uh, the 29th in the morning back in Maryland where I'm from and just watch it with the family, uh, you know, those three days and just, you know, see, see, just take it all in and just see, you know, if, if I get that call. And, you know, if I do, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's go time. You know, I'm ready uh, to, 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 you know, chase my dream. And like I always said, it's not how you get in, it's how you stay in. So, yeah, and the draft is going to be held in a big mid-American conference city. It's going to be in Cleveland. So maybe that's a good sign for you, Jarrett, and everybody else from the mid-American conference that is in the draft pool. Look, we wish you uh, nothing but the best of luck here. Uh, so we hope everything goes well, and we hope you're not waiting too long for your name to get called on draft weekend. Best of luck to you. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks, Jarrett. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.